G'day guys, how are we going? How's things? Here we are, Sunday night. We've brought it forward at a little bit early for our Sunday night live chat tonight. Brought it forward to six instead of seven tonight. I think there's probably a few people pretty keen to watch a couple of big new TV shows that are out later on later on tonight. So here we are. We're going to have it tonight at uh, 6 p.m. And uh, hopefully it's all coming through loud and clear. So tonight's chat tonight's going to be about swag setups. Now, What's the go? Are they set up on the ground or are they off the ground? I'm pretty keen to hear from you guys because this is a topic that I get asked a truckload about. G'day, guys. A few of you on there, right? Steve B, how you going, mate? For postcards and bush stuff. Yeah, thanks very much, mate. That was um, was a good series that we did there a number of number of years ago. Went to air on Channel 31. It was a great series, so check that one out. Biggles, how are you guys? Mud Duck from up there in Queensland. We're straying off road, and thanks very much, guys. Good old swag. They are Tyler. How you going, mate? Oh, they're all rolling in. So, um, I assume it's all loud and clear. Oh, yeah, Biggles has said it's all loud and clear. So that's all. <laughs> that's all good as long as you can hear it. So yeah, swag setups on the ground or off the ground. What is the go with this now? Cattle drovers have been setting swags up on on the ground for many, many donkey's years, right? So. Now, all of a sudden, swags have been set up off the ground, up on stretches and all this sort of stuff. Um, now, this is a bit of a follow-up for a video that I've got come up tomorrow up tomorrow night um, at 5 p.m. My vi next video is going to come up, and it's a little bit about this too. So I'm not going to give you much information about my swag set up tonight, but tell you what, I want to hear from you guys, and it's where you put them, swags on the ground or off the ground, and why is the big one. So, um, yeah, so tomorrow night I'll go into a lot more detail about why I put my swag on the ground because I get asked so many feeding and I get asked so many times, you know, with the videos that I do, and my swag's always sitting on the ground, and, you know, and so many people ask me, why don't you put it up on a stretcher? Well, you have to wait till tomorrow night as to why I don't, but there's a few other things coming up in that video as well, not just about why I set my swag up on the ground. So let's see if some of, some of you guys, what's the go there? <clears throat> um, how many guys are you, uh, what, what's the go? How many guys, I want to hear from guys from stretches, really. I'd like to hear about them um, and why you're putting them up on stretches. That would be, um, be uh, actually, mud ducks, you do come from New South Wales. You're not in uh, Queensland, are you? After the uh, Ford Direction DVDs we did many years ago with you guys. That's right, you're in New South Wales from where we went in the Wadigans. Not getting a bit mixed up there, mate, but hey, that happens. But good to see you on there tonight there, Steve. Thanks very much. Um, Luke, off the ground in northern Queensland. Well, I probably understand it maybe up in northern Queensland because there's some big lizards up there with big teeth and, you know, they might have a bit of a chomp on you if you're, if you're sitting on the ground. But um, that's probably, probably a good excuse why you might put your swag off the ground up there. But other than that, I know there's plenty of, plenty of snakes and things in northern Queensland too, but... Um, pretty keen, to, pretty keen to hear about why uh, your real reasons for putting it up off the ground up there in northern Queensland would be good to hear from it. Um, whatever else is going on there, um, Eric, where are you going there, mate? Um, swags preferably um, floating, floating a bit wet. Well, yeah, I've, look, I've had my swag in all sorts of weather. I've had you know rain running through it, or you know r running through the ground there while it's sitting on the ground, but. I've never had a trouble getting wet, but still, it still stays on the ground, and you'll find out tomorrow night as on why. Steve, uh, my swag's too big for a stretcher, so so you're putting your swag on the ground, mate. Yeah, well, there you go. There's another one for on the ground. We're getting some um, getting some pretty good feedback from guys that put them on the ground and not up off stretchers. Uh, Mike, you used to used to set up on a stretcher to be out, out of the mud. Uh, now back set up on the ground as it's flat. Well, yeah, right, eh? That's a good point there, and. Again, I'll give some more information about that tomorrow night. Um, who else have we got there? Western Australia, what's going on there, mate? Um, I've been thinking about getting a stretcher as per the body's getting a bit older. I've heard a few people sort of say that too, you know, that, um, you know, when they get a bit older, they like to get their swag up off the ground and get them on stretchers. It's a bit easier to get in and out of of a night time and get out of them in the morning. But, you know, that that's all <laughs> that's all good. Um, yeah, on the, on the ground, uh, for me, um, um, I set mine up on, on the roof rack, on the roof rack once, and the roof, rooftop swag. I've heard of um, maybe people doing that, especially if you're, again, you're going up there, maybe northern Queensland, you might put your swag up on the roof rack, um, get away from those big lizards with teeth up there. But apart from that, I actually, I've only done the cape once. I did the cape many, oh, about six, seven years ago, and, and I put my swag on the ground up through there too, but. You know, that's not saying that's a good idea either. So, yeah, pretty keen to hear from you guys. Uh, Mike, uh, used to put me swag um, 
on, on the ground, um, still, still on the stretcher. There we go. Um, till it sagged. Yeah, well, that's probably one sort of thing I was maybe thinking, you know, with stretchers that, yeah, they sag a bit, but, hey, we'll find out more about that tomorrow night. Uh, Biggles, if I was going to use a swag, um, I'd have to put it on a stretcher. Too difficult getting getting uh, down and into the ground in these days. Well, yeah, that's all fine. And this is why, you know, the feedback I'm pretty keen to hear from some of you guys as to why you're, you know, using stretchers because they have been feeding them. The old swag, it's been set up on the ground for donkey's years. Um, Land Cruiser, um, tried a rooftop tent. Um, seems like a lot of sacrifice for weight. Yeah, look, I've I've never been keen on rooftop tents, and that is one accessory that will never, ever fit on, never, ever go on my patrol. Regardless of whatever I do, I'll never, ever fit a rooftop tent, one for the weight reasons too. But, hey, but again, they they suit a lot of people as well. You know, get, it, get you up off the ground, and people like the old rooftop tents. So, you know, it's um all for how, how you want to set your thing up. Tyler, stretches are bulky and take up a lot of room. Well, there you go. That's um, not a bad point there. Um, I might have some feedback on that tomorrow night, but, yeah, we'll see how we go. Eric, um, stretches, I think, are uh, easier to set up, um, to stand up before, yeah, and back back for sure. Yeah, um, yeah, a lot of people, yeah, sort of think that idea about stretches, you know. You don't have to sort of stand up so far, don't have to bend over so far when you get in on out of them. But um, it's, it's, it's a feeling of it's amazing how many times I get asked this point. You know, when my videos come through and the good old swag sit on the ground um, and so many people ask, why don't you put this up off the ground and get it up on a stretcher? Um, Max, um, on the ground, yep, I use a tarp underneath occasionally, yep, pretty much the same setup, mate, that, that I sort of use there too. That's not a bad idea, putting a tarp down, especially if it's going to be maybe a little bit wet on the ground. Um, off our own landish, uh, off the ground for water, uh, critters and can sit sit and have a, have a brekkie, you know, brekkie and reach out as well. Um, but I don't have a stretcher yet. Well, you might get one uh, down the track. Who knows? Uh, Mike also set up um, swag in the tub of the tub of the, uh, the back of the ute off off the ground. Yeah, that's not probably a bad idea too. Chuck it in there. Um, chuck it in the back of the ute. Might be a bit comfortable there. Lay the old um, back door down. And you can roll your swag out in there and uh, plenty of comfy. That's probably not not a bad idea. Uh, right, Ross, wait till you're over 60 and you're in in and out about five times <laughs> out about five times a night. Well, I've only got a couple of years to go, mate, before you that number, but at the moment I'm still pretty comfortable with the old swag being set up on the ground. So yeah, and hopefully I don't have to get up five or six times <laughs> throughout the night, but we'll see how we go there, Ross, a bit later on down the track. You know, that could change. Uh, ben, uh, ventilation for humidity in, in the far north. Oh, there you go. That's why he um, yeah, locks it up off the ground, gets a bit of ventilation, cool air underneath it, and uh, keeps you nice nice and cool. This is awesome. I, I've never had this sort of sort of topic um, you know, discussed with a lot of people. So it's great getting some feedback as to why you guys and how you're setting your swags up. Uh, Mike, I've got a swag uh, ground sheet, um, so back on the ground now, um, flat, uh, mud free, and love it. Yeah, look, yeah, same thing, mate. I'll, that's how I've set up mine. Um, unless the ground's sort of too wet, or if it's dry, I generally don't use a tarp. But if it's a bit wet, I might throw a tarp down. But find out more about that setup tomorrow night, five pm. Um, Mike, love the channel. Thanks very much, mate. Really appreciate that feedback. Uh, Kevin, I'm over sixty. Oz tent bunker, the way for for me to go. Uh, I haven't seen um, seen many of those around, but a um, uh, mate of mine's actually got one of those. If it's the one I'm sort of thinking of, um, yeah. So uh, and he he loves that thing too. It's a bit like a I think it's a cot sort of thing up on a stretcher thing, and he he loves it. So if it's the same sort of thing, mate, um, yeah, that's that's the way to go. Uh, West Australian, what's going on, mate? Uh, so glad you're here. Here you never ditch the swag for a rooftop tent, yeah, mate. That'll never ever happen. Rooftops just aren't in my thing at all. Um, being in a swag and is a traditional for me, yeah, stretcher or not. I like being on the ground, yeah, pretty much, mate. That's um, sort of my way of thinking as well, but yeah, not for everyone, you know, you got to set your gear up for whatever suits you guys, not what's going to work for someone else, I suppose. And uh, that, that's definitely the way to go. Tyler, it's Australia's tradition to sleep on the ground and swag. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a bit that way as well. I'm a bit of a traditionalist through and through. And, and again, that's still one of the reasons why my swag's on the ground still for, for those reasons. But, um, yeah, certainly that's that's the way to go there. Uh, Land Cruiser, whatever you do, make sure in summer around water you have, a, you have a good quality mesh in the swag. Yeah, look, mine is. I've never, ever had troubles with... You know, with um, mozzies and 
midges. I've, I've, I've been out Fraser Island a few times in in my swag and never any dramas with midges getting in through through the mesh and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, no dramas there. And I've slept a number of times with the canvas thrown right back and just the you know the mesh over the top and no worries here with um not being bitten and with uh, mozzies and that sort of stuff in those sort of places. G'day, Greg. How you going there, mate? Oh, I'm going going all right. Um, Steve, uh, throw it on the ground. <laughs> throw it on the ground. Don't be soft. Well, there you go. There's another one there. Uh, Mike um, once fell out of out of the swag when it when it was on the stretcher, trying to to have a whiz and never again. Well, there you go. So there's another one there. Why why he's gone from a stretcher back on the ground again? Because yeah, it's not so far to fall. If you, maybe you have one of those one of those sort of nights. Um, <laughs> Darchy dusk um, till dawn on a stretcher for me. There we go. He likes his uh, on a stretcher. So there's a few going on. A bit of a, a bit of a mix, mix sort of a bag going on there. Um, like his eighties. What's going? Tim had been, been subscribed for the last two months and love the vids, mate. Keep up the great work. Thanks very much. Greatly, greatly appreciate that feedback. And good you're getting something out of the videos that are coming through. Uh, greatly appreciate that, mate. Um, Eric. Um, how do you, do, you, do you own a, an outdoors retail outlet? I think I saw you in Bensdale before. No, no, I don't, mate. Don't know own any shops at all. Um, so yeah, I'll go through sort of. Ben, oh, actually, I haven't been down Bensdale for a, a little while. Um, but yeah, haven't been down there for a while. But no, I don't own any shops down that way, mate. That I know of. But you never know. Um, a bivy on the ground, yeah. The old bivvies, they're um, they're not a bad thing too. The old fed income traditional swag, just a bit of canvas bag sort of thing on the ground with a flap over your head, and that's it. Job's done. Mike Hunt, any snow on the peaks? I've um, I think there's been a bit, a little bit of snow falling. I don't think it was all as big as what the build up was going to be meant to be for it. They were forecasting, you know, seven eight hundred for the last couple of days. But yeah, there's certainly a bit of snow around. But um, the weather that's coming. And now for next week, it's not going to hang around long. And um, the old snow season's a bit uh, a bit drastic at the moment. Um, yeah, bugger all. For this time of year, here we are now moving into second week of July and there is still bugger all snow on the ground. So hopefully um, coming in late July, August, that might turn around hopefully, but we'll have to wait and see what happens with all that. G'day, Gazza. How you going, mate? Thanks so much there for coming in here tonight. Uh, Longy, um, you brought an electric blanket. <laughs> I think you might have. Did you ask me that question last week about whether I got an electric blanket for my swag? Well, no, I don't. I don't need one of those. And when you see my swag tomorrow night, um, I don't think you're going to see any electric blanket in it. So, no, there's no no electric blanket going on here, mate. That's for sure. Um, wait till the arthritis sets in. It's a killer. Well, hopefully I don't have that arthritis problem. So, um, yeah, at the moment I don't. So for now, uh, yeah, the old swag's going to stay firmly still on the ground for a little while longer yet. We'll see how we go with all that. Um, hey, Kevin, um, bloody hard for me to get up off the, for the ground for my age. Uh, that's why I have a bunker. Yeah, again, you know, that's if that works for you, mate, that's what you got to do. And and that's the sort of some of the feedback, you know, you get from people why they put their swags on stretches and, and not on the ground is, you know, when you get a little bit bit older and a bit later on in the in the tooth down the track, well, just makes them a little bit easier to get in and out of them. That's all fine, mate. As long as you get out there and use it, that's that's the big one. Um, have you used a swag rooftop um, back back in the swag? No, I haven't. Have you used a, you have, oh you've used swags rooftop and back in the swag? Yeah, I've not used a rooftop full stop at all, and um, yeah, it won't be one of those things that I'll be looking to get any time soon, if ever at all. Ah, Leanne's dropped in. She's obviously having a quiet night tonight, not playing any music in the ambo wherever you're going. Um, swag on the ground there. Yep, that's all good. Another one for swag on the ground. Uh, Andrew, I uh, love the vids. Thanks, mate. Remind me uh, remind me <laughs> my time in the, in the theatre of a uh, years ago travelling Oz and uh, doing some great fall drive in the hills where, where you go. Yeah, well, that's, um, that's pretty good, mate. Greatly appreciate all that. Um, some of the places where we end up. Certainly find some, uh, always find some pretty cool places to go to. There's plenty of them around. But, um, yeah, we're going to look at getting away, do another solo probably next weekend. All going well. We'll see how, we, how, it, all, how, all, um, how it all pans out. Um, Uncle Tom's um, foam mattress in the back of the 47 Truby. There you go. Just a foam mattress in the ground, oh, in the back of the Truby there. That's not a bad little setup. Um, got your roof over your head already, which is not a bad setup as well. Um, 
rest Australian, how many people that are that have had rooftop ten are they and they are pulling them off and getting going back to the swag? It'd be an interesting little discussion to have too at some stage down the track. Um, about yeah, rooftop tents and why people like them and why they use them. Um, again, I get it for the top end stuff. If you're going to do, you know, up around top end and Northern Territory and Cape York and wherever else and, and above up there where you got those big lizards on the ground up there with big teeth, I can understand them. But, yeah, I don't know. That would be an interesting topic to um, chat about people, why they use the rooftop tents and not like sleeping on the ground. G'day, uh, mate. Um, old school, keep them coming. Yeah, love that, mate. Yeah, the old school stuff. Alex, um, great show. Thanks so much. Do you prefer hard ground to, to stop the... Uh, waking up and sticks and sticking in your back. Yeah, well, I'll um, go into that discussion tomorrow night too, mate. I cover all that in my little video tomorrow night. Um, yeah, just got to make sure there aren't any sticks on the ground before you roll roll that thing out on the ground, then you know this sort of problem. But tomorrow night we'll go in a lot more detail about that one. Um, that's a tall glass of vodka. I'll tell you now, mate, it's, 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 it is a big glass, but it's not vodka in it I can get. Let me give you the drum. Big glass of the, that stuff that comes out of the tap. <laughs> I get a bit, a bit dry in the old throat, yakking away to you guys sometimes. But no, nah, it's all good. Um, I uh, I met me and uh, and had a rooftop tent. Oh yeah, back in the old swag. Yeah, right. Back in the old swag. Yeah, that's all good. Um, how many cameras do you have on a typical shoot, and what type? Yeah, look, I um I'm running um, um, four GoPros, just mainly GoPros, the main ones I use. Yeah, good little camera. They do all, all the action sort of stuff and robust little thing. They get knocked around. But, yeah, good, good little cameras, and they, they seem to work work pretty good. Uh, Kevin, um, just back from Sunset Country. You know, I was only looking at videos only tonight about Sunset Country. I wouldn't mind maybe doing a few trips up that way, Murray River way, uh, over the next few months. Um, yeah, so Sunset Country, I've, I've been a long time since I've been up through the Sunset uh, National Park, but I wouldn't mind getting back up there again. Fantastic few days, yeah, it's five days. That sounds like a really good trip, mate. Anthony, um, Tony from Bryogalong, just down the road, mate. Oh, kind of just down the road. Um, swag in the in the Tura tent. There you go, so he's putting a swag inside the tent. Right, that's an interesting little combo going on there. Um, yeah, well, actually, that's – well, actually, you have to wait for the video again the following week, and I'll go into a bit more detail about what I'm looking at maybe do down the track, but we'll leave that till that too. Uh, Wayne, on the ground when uh, we're not raining, on a stretcher in the rain under the gazebo. Yeah, that's probably not so bad, um, particularly if you you know got a bit of rain and that flowing through your camp, I suppose. Last thing you want to do is go and get wet. So either combination there works well, mate, as long as it's working for you, that's, um, that's always all good. Um, Hoyle away from yeah, Hoyle all, all, all by the way. Yeah, he's saying go to everyone there, old Wayne is. So that's uh, going pretty good there. Um, age, age 20, good stuff. Yep, no worries. Um, Matthew, um, good, good day, big fella. How you going? Uh, how's life doing? Uh, it's going pretty good down here. Any trips you're looking forward to coming up? Yeah, I've um, always looking forward to trips. There are always, always plenty coming up. Um, yeah, it's uh, sometimes it's, it's hard to um, know which direction on the compass to go to there's that many options to go a little bit limited to uh traveling interstate at the moment but look we can sort of go interstate but i'm sort of just going to stay pretty firmly grounded in victoria at the moment just everything going on for obvious reasons but um yeah there's plenty of options coming up as to where i'm going to head off uh in the coming weeks that's for sure uh vodka on tap now there's there's an idea if you can get one of those set up in the back of your Back of your Toyota there, you'd probably do it all right, I reckon. But um, it's not going to the back of mine. <laughs> um, I shot all, all my clips on the GoPros, yeah. Yeah, the GoPros are a good little, good little, good little camera, that's for sure. Are uh, you not scared on, on your own? Um, no, I'm not. That's why um, I don't have any dramas with getting out there by myself and I've not had a bad experience even yet. But touch wood, that um, wherever there's a bit of wood, none around here. But, um, yeah, that you know, at the moment, yeah, I, I love going solo stuff. It's great. I'm fully set up for it and uh, love going out there. And, uh, yeah, camping by myself and getting all set up. And, yeah, it's really joy, really good. Um, Ross there went across uh, Longreach and back today. Uh, Longreach, that'd be nice. Uh, there were literally hundreds of caravans on the road and parked up. Great to see see us reutilising the Australian in, in the great place on earth. Yeah, look, it's probably, that's probably one good thing with everything going at the moment, that people are staying home and, 
you know, and tripping around our own country and our own states is uh, is certainly a good thing for those reasons. But, um, yeah, so hopefully, uh, yeah, it all continues down the track and we all keep going, that's for sure. Are you going to chase some snow? I'm going to chase some snow there, Aaron, when, uh, when that opportunity comes, mate, because there's not been a great deal of opportunities even in the last month. Um, so, yeah, I'm... Generally, um, the snow season down here, the best time to be start looking at snow season, if anyone's looking to maybe come down, it's generally late July into August is when some good times and good good snow sort of stuff starts hitting the ground. But as I said before, you know, here we are in first week in um, first week in July and there's still bugger all around. There was a little bit fell over the weekend. Um, but, you know, you look, you look at the snow cams on, you know, those higher peaks and uh, Hotham and Buller and that sort of stuff and, they still got, you know, grass coming out through the, through the snow. They've got snow on the ground up in those places, but they still got shrubs and stuff coming through the ground, so through the snow. So still not a lot sitting up around up there either. So we're going to have to wait and see. And, and as I say, we've got a few warmish days coming this week as well, which is going to pretty much probably um, melt anything that fell, you know, sort of under about 1,500 over the weekend will be gone well and truly uh, by the end of next week. So I'll have to see what happens with snow going forward. Um, Dazza, how you going, mate? Uh, what state has the best four drive options and campers, including Victoria? Geez, that's um, that's a big one, mate. There's uh, just depends on what you're what you're looking for, I suppose. You know, all states have got so much going on there, on all sorts of options on on what sort of four drive and camp you want to go and do. Um, so yeah, really just have to uh, do a bit of homework there if you're looking to uh, get out and about. That's for sure. Uh, much time in Little Desert and Cobra. Um, keen to check it out. I uh, haven't been to that area, mate, but, yeah, wouldn't mind maybe checking somewhere those these desert countries out, you know, Border Track and Murray Sunset Country. Wouldn't mind getting back up there. Whipperfield. I've done Whipperfield a few times. Wouldn't mind going back up there again too. Great country, but we'll see how it, how it all pans out in the coming months. Great time you head up through there too, especially this time of year. Uh, Michael, how you going there, mate? Um, wondering, does Terrell going to have Alpine diesel or what's the best diesel additive? No, they don't. You won't get any um, Alpine diesel in any of those sort of service stations. Uh, there's a couple of videos there, mate. Check them out that I've recently did about Alpine diesel and what I use and how I mix it and why I mix it. So check those out. But no, you won't. Um, the only places you'll get the Alpine diesel is when you really get close to those sort of snowish sort of resorts. Um, no, Omeo's got it. Mansfield's got it. Bright's got it. Um there's not many others around other than that that I sort of know of. So, yeah, always better, best off mixing your own. And even with the Alpine diesel mix, mate, in the, at the service stations, I still mix my own. So, again, I go into all those details. So maybe check out a couple of those videos I've got um, where I go into yeah, a lot of detail about diesel additives and mixing it and that sort of stuff. So check that out, mate. Um, Steve, uh, hopefully another attempt at the, uh, at, at the high country in January. Well, let's hopefully, mate, since you missed out last year, whenever it was, you're going to come down. So, yeah, see how it all goes, mate. But uh, we've just got to take each day and week as it comes at the moment and see how it all, see how it all, all pans out. Hang on, it's got another swig of this so-called vodka that everyone reckons I'm drinking, which I'm not. Um, have you done any driving there, Stuart, around Mount Macedon? No, I haven't. Doesn't Haven't done any driving over that side, the other side of the city there, around Mount Macedon. No, I haven't done any at all over there. Um, Alex, uh, I've watched the uh, old videos of Hornet Stream Track today. Looks an awesome, interesting place. Regards um, from the lockdowns in Sydney. Yeah, you've got to check with Hornet Stream. It seems to have um, a lot of extra closures on it. Well, it's certainly be closed at the moment. Pretty sure that's a seasonal shut track. But, um, yes, yeah, Hornet Stream is a, is a great drive. It's about 50-something crossings in not many Ks at all. So I've only ever done Hornet Stream once and... Yeah, it wasn't a great experience, but uh, we got through it in the end a few, good few years ago. So, yeah, check it out, mate. But, um, yeah, it, it'll be shut at the minute. But, um, yeah, it's, it's hard to know whether that track's open or not, even when the tracks are meant to be open because it does cop a fair bit of damage from all those crossings. So you need to just check it out, mate, and do some homework on that one if you're going to come down and do it. Uh, Kevin, um, best, on my own, uh, best on my own sleep in and run at my own speed. Never scared to be out there alone. There you go. Yeah, same, same, mate. I don't have any dramas. Um, been out there and doing a lot of the solo stuff that I do. Yeah, really enjoy it. It's quite peaceful and relaxing in this current climate. It's great. Um, 
Western Australian, happy with the patrol at the moment, mate. Yeah, look, absolutely stoked with my patrol. It's a great thing. Uh, it's been a great, great full drive from from day one. Well looked after. Uh, and at the moment, everything's still going strong, still going solid. Yeah, love it. No um, no, no issues at all with it. It's really, really good thing. Um, good day, Ross. How are you going there, mate? How's things? Uh, hope things going well. Yeah, it is, mate. It's all going pretty good down here. Uh, hopefully the same thing's going for you there, mate, wherever wherever you are. Um, adventures there, what is your preferred mix in the Alpine um, diesel and what brands? We, I did cover that. I um, have to check out some of those videos that I've done there, mate, where I go into all that sort of detail. There's a few brands on the market, and as I've said in probably some of those videos, before you go putting what anyone recommends in an Alpine mix additive, before you go putting anything in your fuel tank, make sure it's okay for your vehicle because what might be okay for either mine or someone else's might not necessarily be okay for yours. It depends on how modern your vehicle is. Um, you know, some of these really you know, modern-day vehicles might not like additives going in their fuel system with the computer arrangements and that sort of stuff. So just because someone says, yeah, get this diesel additive, you know, for your fuel, don't just go and buy it. Do some homework first, chat to your mechanic, make sure it's okay before you put anything down your tank because the last thing you want is dramas down the track going further. So, yeah, that's the that's the trick for sure. Uh, <laughs> if you've got a cold night, says Mike, he, he doesn't mind a bit of vodka there. Um, we all know <laughs> – well, here we go. I shouldn't have mentioned anything about the old um, – what's in that glass here. But if anything, it's, it's, it's a straight out of the old – kitchen tappy there's none only water going in it that's for sure i can tell you um g'day mate here you go <laughs> oh here we go they're all coming in now about the vodka lime and lemon uh nothing going on here have you ever ever come across the button man no i haven't i've been asked a few times about button man uh and especially when he really came out of the woodwork there i'd never heard of him until you know he really came out of the woodwork there with what potentially happened down in one and Gatta those missing couple but um yeah i've never come across him i've certainly know a few people that have you know come across him on the tracks and never been a problem so yeah don't know much about button man at all and he's gone real quiet at the moment because yeah nothing going on there so see how see what happens with him as uh, time goes on uh lee do you do you know if there is any if there's something uh you can coat your swag in to prevent mold Again, no, I've never had a problem with mould in mine. I just make sure it's dry when I um, when I pack it up. And you know, if I you know leave camp and it's been wet, I always unroll it and you know throw it in my shed there until it dries out. So that's one big way of is preventing mould is make sure it's dry when you when you pack it up. And if it comes home wet, we'll just unroll it, let it dry out, and then roll it back up again. But yeah, I've got no no um, no remedies there for preventing mold on your on your canvas swag so yeah probably can't help you there mate because i've never had any dramas with it at all uh eric um when do you think your next video will be uh, next video is going to be tomorrow night mate 5 p.m tomorrow night and there'll be another one again 5 p.m we're on a bit of a roll now again i only missed that one week last week um due to weather and everything else that was going on so yeah tomorrow night 5 p.m there'll be a new video a bit about the topic we're talking about tonight and then another one next week at 5 p.m. again. Um, Dazza, are you are you preparing to upgrade to a 62 at this stage? No, I'm not. Got a few mates with them, and they fair and them, love them, um, the Y62. But no, at the moment, mate, I'm going to um, stick with my mighty GU um, and sticking with the good old ZD30. It's going great, so no need to do any uh, any changes with that at the moment. Absolutely love it. It's great. Aaron, uh, what are your thoughts on uh, on the uh, recent National Park announcement, e.g. Wombat? Yeah, I, I didn't know about it until someone only mentioned something about it to me only last week that they're talking about a few closures. Look, Mount Cole has been on a hot topic. Even when I did that, I went to Mount Cole, did a video down there, the best part of a couple of years ago, and that Mount Cole area was... Um, one of those areas where, you know, camps were getting closed up or, you know, and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I, I hope it doesn't go through, mate, because, you know, they are certainly popular areas. But and depending what what the reasons are as to why, you know, I don't know the reasoning for why they're, they're potentially looking to, you know, make changes and close, you know, Wombat and Pyrenees and Mount Cole up. But, yeah, it's um, over that side, over the west side of Melbourne. 
So I really can't really sort of say much about that at the moment, mate. But hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, it doesn't go ahead, mate. Whatever's whatever they're planning to to do over there in the in the time down the track. Uh, but man is is a man with a extremely large large butt. I've never actually seen him, so I really can't comment about that one. Um, Hutto, what's going there, mate? Uh, Doona or sleeping bag in the swag? I don't have either. I just have, um, and again, you'll see it tomorrow night at 5 p.m. will be what's inside my swag. I'll reveal the whole lot. But no, I don't have Doona's or sleeping bag. I can't stand sleeping bags. They're not my thing. Um, so, yeah, but you'll whole lot will be revealed tomorrow night what's inside my swag. Just maybe have a pair of sunnies on when, when I do run the – canvas flat back because it's pretty bright my blankets but they are great but check them out anyway tomorrow night um any updates on the on the on your basic tools um for videos now nah, no updates mate everything's um pretty simple on on how to go about doing stuff and simple's how i like everything everything from my camp gear all the way through just works a treat um kevin he reckons he's met the button man nice old bloke uh, about my age uh, great bloke to pick up pick his brains i reckon he would have a few amazing stories he'd be one bloke interesting bloke to sit around the campfire with that for sure and um see what sort of stories he's got to tell you that'd be pretty fitting and interesting stuff i reckon um what else who else we got around there big fella how you going there mate thanks for coming in tonight um, Leanne in my swag, woolen blankets under underneath, and another on top with a cheap open sleeping bag. Jeez, you got it all going on that one. It's a wonder you can roll the damn thing up with so much in it. Um, <laughs> unless you take it all out, I don't know what's going on with that one, but yeah, that's a lot going on there. Um, big fella, uh, I've had to be in, in, in something bigger than a swag, otherwise, I get claustrophobic. Yeah, well, probably you wouldn't probably get in mine because, um, yeah, mine's pretty confined when you get inside it. It's only got a, I think the width of the front's only about 850 and then the back's about sort of 750 and it's only about sort of 700 high. So well, I think that's one of the reasons why I'm so tasty warm in it because it is so confined inside. I've never been cold in my swag. It's great, but, um, yeah, I actually love it. Um, <laughs> I've, uh, I've been... Uh, but, I've been in something bigger. Oh, I've gone on in that one. He's got claustrophobic. Um, oh, mate, do you have any any chips on your motor? I don't have chips now. I had a chip years ago. And then when I come on board with those guys down there, the DTA guys down there, D2 Australia guys down there in Daniel, chip came out and I've just now got the tune on it and amazing difference. And that tune's been now on my patrol on my ZD30 for – going into six years and it's been fantastic so if you want to have a chat with the boys down there at daniel um matt will be back next week have a chat with matt and uh see where you go from there but no i don't have chips now gone um don't uh don't eat heaps of beans then uh, then the yeah that's the other thing too with sleeping bags if you have if you're pretty keen on baked beans the after effects of those cannot be sometimes good inside a sleeping bag so yeah I, I don't, i'm not keen on baked beans at all so i'm uh, i'm pretty pretty safe here, pretty safe there mate we um, don't have that problem with um eating beans and in my sleeping bags i don't have sleeping bag or baked beans all good there um i'm off on tuesday gonna do the dedic dedic valley oh you're right eh? Hopefully, uh, hope that's open, mate. You might want to do a bit of check and make sure it is. Make sure it's all good down there. Um, Mike, is the Kevington pub open or is it still closed? I'm not sure what's going on there. I know it was closed for some time. It's a really sad story what's going on with the Kevington pub. Been in the family there for many, many years and generations and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I don't know whether Wayne's still got it and what's going on with it. Um, yeah, not not sure. Last time I saw Kevington Pub, it had sort of cyclone fence, sort of you know builders fence around it, and it was shut up. So yeah, can't uh, can't help you, there, mate, um, on what's going on with the Kevy Pub. But hopefully it is back open because it is a cracking pub there, right on the river. Really, really nice spot. Um, off topic, what do you what do you EGTs get to? Um, could you do it? That's a really that's amazing how you just asked that about what do my EGTs get to? Because that is a video I'm I'm looking to do at the moment. I'm gonna get one made. Um, where I'm gonna talk my way through my EGTs. You'll see the EGTs, how they work and how high they get with the boost pressures and both on and off road. So that's a good uh good question you've asked there, mate, because I'm definitely going to be looking to do one of those. 
um, pretty shortly. So hopefully you can hang into that. But um, just in the short term, though, um, mine at 100K an hour sit on sort of about 300, 310 tops. And all that came from the modifications that we did on it oh, over two years ago, now two and a half a year ago, uh, August 18, when I did the bigger intercooler, bigger turbo and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully you can wait wait for that video, mate, because I will get that done because that's um, that's one I do get asked a little bit about. And now you've just asked for it, it might uh, remind me now to get out and get that one done. Western Australian off-road. So many pubs have uh, have shut over here. That's no good, mate. If it's a real shame, it is. Uh, if you got pubs and that closing up over there, mate, that's not um, yeah, not not great at all. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it's only a short-term thing. They can all come back up and running again. <laughs> wild, wild, what? Wild Elvies. Don't know what they are. Um, we'll work that out soon. Yeah, big fella. Kevington pubs still closed. There you go. Still shut. That's a real shame. If it is. Um, Mike Hunt, where can we buy your stubby holders from, please? Um, my stubby holders are back there. Um, you can just jump on my website at uh, timbase4driveventures.com and have a look at it from there, mate. And uh, if you want a stubby holders, just let me know and I'll chuck those straight in the mail and get them straight out to you. But greatly appreciate you asking there, mate. Thank you. Um, Kevin, the pub still closed. Yeah, it is. Um, thanks, mate. Uh, yeah. Love, love the video. Looking forward to the next one. No worries there, Raj. I'll uh, look at getting that video done, mate, because, yeah, I do get asked a little bit about EGTs and and rather than just sitting here, you know, talking about numbers, um, it'd be interesting to actually see real life, real real world, um, you know, what the numbers are doing with my EGTs and boosts and, and that sort of stuff because, yeah, pretty interesting to see what's going on with my old little ZD30. It's a great, great one. So I'll look at getting that done for you, mate. Uh, Muzz, um, how much? I'm not sure what what uh, what you're asking there for how much. Um, our local one there, Western at, at uh, Clifton, has walked. Yeah, it's no good, mate. It's horrible, mate. Dreams all over. No good at all, mate. If your little local uh, water hole there is closing up, and uh, who knows, maybe down the track, mate, they might um, recover and, and come back, which would be a great good thing. Craig, uh, try a swag once and found it very close and tight. Yeah, it depends on what size swag you, you're getting there. If you're just getting a single one, they are, like mine is, they are pretty tight and confined inside. But if you get sort of a king single, they're a bit bigger. They're about, like I said, mine at the front's about 800 or something at the front. I think the king singles, they get to about a metre wide at the front. Then if you want to go to the doubles, you know, for that sort of thing, well, you know, they're, they're plenty of room inside. But the only thing with the double swag, they are feeding them. They're a massive thing, and you can pretty much only get them up on roof racks because they're about 1,800 long by the time they're rolled up and a big unit. So that's the other thing you've got to take into account with a swag if you want a bit more room. Um, yeah, they're just be a bit, they are a big unit. So try, check that out and see how you go with that. Any plans to upgrade your camera gear? And I, 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 only thing with shooting in 4K, um, for shooting in 4K, it uses a stack of storage. And I do shoot some stuff in 4K for those that know what it's all about, high def stuff. But yeah, it um, it shoots a stack, it takes up a stack of storage on on your cameras and then your hard drives and all the rest of it. And um, so that's by a lot of lot of reasons, some reasons why I don't do a lot of 4K stuff. And then it's getting TVs and videos and you know computers that can handle watching a 4K video at the moment. I'm probably pretty sure that maybe they're starting to get into that sort of range where they can start watching some of this high def stuff, but yeah, pretty much still at 2.7 for me. Eric, I'll grab some stubby. I would greatly appreciate that, mate. Check it out on the website, mate, there. It's all there. Just make sure you send us your details. And if you're after a particular colour, I do ask there, mate, if you're after a particular colour on the purple, the black or the dark blue, just let us know and I'll chuck those in the mail and get them straight out to you. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, buy a sticker for the car too with the stubby holders. Maybe next time, next year, calendar. Yeah, look, I... I Stop running the calendars. The last year was the first year that I haven't done calendars for a number of years, and I think it might be just a bit of a sign of the times. I've actually still got some left. Actually, my laptop's now sitting on oh, about half a dozen of them from uh, 2020. I think it's just maybe a sign of the times where people don't use calendars anymore. You know, they're getting into the tech stuff and oh, everyone's got computers and phones and, you know, for reminders, whatever else. So who needs calendars anymore these days? They're probably not using them. Um. Uh, is is your? Oh, here is that. 
Um, do you like fishing and at all? Yeah, I, I do do a little bit of fishing. Unfortunately, the trout season is now closed for a lot of the high country rivers, so you just got to check that out and uh, and see see where you're going to go fishing. But yeah, I do don't mind doing a bit of fishing. And if I get up on the Murray River a bit later on with some of these videos, I wouldn't mind um, yeah trying a bit of fishing up there with the Murray cods and stuff like that. But I'm certainly no fisherman, but I do like having a bit, a bit of a go and see see what goes on with it. Um, DJ's um, McCullough's Bridge open, I hope. Yeah, look, McCullough's Bridge is certainly open. You can get down to McCullough's Bridge. Uh, a couple of good camp spots before and uh, before and after or even right on just the other side of the bridge there. But you can't get to, if you've watched that um, solo video that I did a few months ago where I went uh, camp down the Snow River near the bridge there, you can't get down there in that little river junction track. That is seasonally shut. So you'll have to wait till later in the year to go and check that spot out because it you can't even walk down there. Well, it's a long way to walk, so no chance of getting down there, but there's some good camp spots just below the bridge on the on the other side of it as you go down. Uh, Kevin, um, bugger 4K, um, your vids are perfect, mate, for us. I uh, greatly appreciate that. Thanks very much, yeah. I, got, I would like to use the 4K stuff, but, yeah, that's it. one of the main dramas is um, need a lot of storage and they do chew up a lot of battery and all sorts of stuff going on with 4K. And then, as I say, you know, some... Um, you know, TVs and videos and phones and that sort of stuff. Computers can't watch that high-def stuff, so that's why I'm still not using it. DJs, uh, how's the old Bricky, bricky um, get so so high-tech savvy? Well, it's all self-taught, mate, um, all self-taught. I've, uh, yeah, just uh, watched a lot of videos and self-taught. I learned a lot through the fall of action days, from back in those days too on, you know, how they go about doing stuff. But everything I've, that I do now is completely and utterly 100% self-taught from just research and find out how to do stuff. Um, good old YouTube. It's amazing what you can find on here when, you, when you're when you looking for stuff. You can even find out how to set your swag up. That's probably one good thing too. Uh, Mike, why'd you take your rock sliders off? I took them off because it was all about my weight reduction, not for me personally, but for the patrol, so they came off. I don't find I need them anymore. I like the look of it now without them. But, yeah, look, those rock sliders, they would have been the best part of easy, probably 40 kgs just in the sliders alone. So they came off um, when uh, when I removed a lot of stuff out of the back of the patrol to get the weight factor down. And my uh, patrol now sits under, under GVM now when it's loaded, packed, ready for a trip. Um, and, uh, yeah, just the way I like it. But, yeah, I do like it without um, without the sliders. It's pretty good. Staff of the Murray, mate, too many tourists because of the COVID. Because of COVID. Yeah, I'm sure there's probably, Kevin, there's probably sure there's um, maybe some quiet spots you can probably find. I've got a mate up there who's tripping around there at the moment, uh, up around the Murray and Murray Sunset. We've been up there for about the last two or three weeks, and he's sending me some great information. So we'll see what happens going down, going down the track. We'll see what happens. Um, Aaron, uh, you've been around Wahala area recently. No, I haven't. Not since um, since the massive floods hit that area two, three weeks ago. So, yeah, no, I haven't, mate. But I'm tipping there'll be, um, you know, that some of those areas, some of those, especially the tra four drive tracks could be closed up for a little while because that Wahala, Wahala area did cop an absolute hiding with the rain that we had there a few week, weeks ago. Uh, Mike, um, when what's the next cook-up vid? I've actually... Going in a, little, in a little bit of a secret when talking about, um, I'm not going to tell you what's in it though, but I've now come up with a my own pie mix. Don't have to wait for that. It might turn up in one of my up and coming solo vids, but Bates has now made his own meat pie mix. It's an absolute crack. I'm still fine tuning just a little bit. I've had a couple of practice runs with it and feeding of it is knockout, but we'll see if I can um, make a couple of pies in the camp oven in my next couple of videos. See how we go with that. It's an absolute beaut. Love it. Bates, he's got his own pie mix. Um, do you use a drone? And if not, why not? Why? I don't use a drone there, mate, um, and there's a lot of reasons why I don't use a drone. Technically, you're not meant to fly a drone in National Park, full stop. I know a lot of people do, you know, put Vic High Country or whatever into, into, into you know, into YouTube search and every second video has got, uh, got drone footage in it. But, you know, technically you're not meant to fly drones in a National Park full stop and that's just the reason why i don't have drones on any of my videos it's it's a shame because i would like to um i had a drone about four years ago three four years ago i had the phantom 4 pro brand spanger took that on my first trip when i went over to tassie the video that i've got there on my channel when i went over to tassie there a few years ago 
and the drone did a nine-day lap around Tasmania and never came out of the box because every national park I went into had the big symbol, no drones, slash. So, yeah, that's the only reason why I don't have drones because, Finnegan, you are not meant to fly them in national parks. So it's a, it's one of those controversial sort of a topics, but um, that's sort of it, a bit in a nutshell. But who knows what happens right down the track. I might um, might like get one because I wouldn't mind one. They're damn good. Um, G'day, Mike. I uh, love your experience. Uh, thanks, mate. Greatly appreciate all the uh, that feedback. That's wicked. Thanks very much. Wonder, um, G'day, mate. How are you going there, mate, in the chat? Hope you're well. Yeah, going all good here, mate. Thanks very much. Greatly appreciate you asking there. All going all good here. Uh, Tyler, is the patrol your daily driver? Yeah, it is. I did used to have another vehicle a um, few years ago. When I say a few years ago, probably about two or three years ago, I used to have another vehicle, run around vehicle. But, yeah, now with what I do, um, the patrol needs to be on the road every day not just coming out now for trips um so yeah it, it is my daily mate it's on the road every single day with where i go and what i do so yeah it is is mate so no no day no other vehicle there um, to run around in um lee what's going there mate have you been to la cola area since the storm yet i was in la cola only um oh, last last week Last couple of weeks, actually, I've been in through La Cola. Um, no dramas there with um, – depends on where you're talking about going in La Cola, but, yeah, general store, well, I think the caravan park's closed at the moment. I don't know what's going on in the caravan park. You might have to do some checks if you want to – if you're after fueling that at the general store. not sure what's happening there. But, um, but yeah, everything's, you know, Tambreath Road, all fine up through there, get to the pinnacles, no dramas, getting in through La Cola. Um, the Chinese Bridge Campground is still – technically shut there's been a few people camping in it but still technically shut through the floods and that there's some a lot of tree damage in that in there um but apart from that yeah get into la cola into the town and everything and and, and up and uh, you know tambreath road and maraca road and that sort of stuff no worries going in through there at all um the wonder i'll be checking checking the pie video mate yeah attempt to to make shepherd's pie well yeah mine's just gonna be meat pie good old meat pie with some pastry um, be that red stuff with tomato sauce. I tell you what, the few practice runs I've had at home, this batch is is pretty damn good. I like it. So we'll see how it goes going forward. Western Australia, yeah, drones have um, have made yeah. Look, some some uh, creators get a bit carried away with drones, and you know, drone footage is great. It is. It look, gives you amazing perspective on you know on what you're looking at and where you're going, but. I think some videos get a bit carried away with drones and it's too much drone footage. That's just my take on it. But, um, but yeah, it can – you can uh, put too much drone footage in. But, um, yeah, a bit of drone footage would be nice with some of the places where I go, that's for sure. Uh, Lee, can you uh, get access to Arbuckle Junction? Yep, no worries. Um, you can get out through up through Lakola, Tambreath Road, Arbuckle Junction. Yep, no dramas at all. And then up to Maraca Road, Pinnacles, no worries from there. Um but, yeah, you just can't continue on to Howard High Plains and that sort of stuff after Arbuckle Junction because that's, yeah, seasonally shut. The gate's about uh, four or five k's up the road just where um, the the track starts there. It's just past the track at Kelly's Lane. Uh, so, yeah, so you, you can get to Arbuckle Junction. No worries at all. I was only up there a few weeks ago. No dramas. Um, <clears throat> not meant to have chainsaws in national parks either, mate. I oh, know, yep. Um, look, I've never ever been, never ever been questioned about a national parks in uh, taking a chainsaw in a national park, in anywhere in the Vic High Country. Um, I know Fraser Island, been up there a couple of times. And you're not not even allowed to have a drone. I mean, a chainsaw in the back of your full drive in when you go to Fraser Island. But down here, yeah, I, I don't know, and I, I think it's a bit lunacy in myself because feeling I, I wouldn't go anywhere. I, and actually, I never do. Never go in the High Country without taking a chainsaw. Um, for a lot of reasons, one just for your firewood, but you know, your chainsaw could be a safety thing because you know, you might have to just cut yourself through a track, big tree might come down. So, to not take chainsaws, yeah, I don't know, I, I wouldn't go anywhere without one, especially down here in the high country at any time of year. I take it all the time, that's for sure. Um, are you selling it? No, Mr. Drone's well and truly gone, mate. It's well and truly gone a few years ago. Um, sold that well and truly because of those reasons why I could not fly it. Uh, Muzz, if, if you, you ask, you just say uh, strap the GoPro onto a pigeon. Yeah, it could probably um, 
could probably try that if you get a homing pigeon as long as he comes back mate that's the thing he mightn't get uh might get the footage you want that's the only drama with putting it on a on a uh on a pigeon um steve um you can get uh permission in, but to fly parks in uh but it's a pain look Again, you know, when it comes to drones, I've been involved in a couple of filming permits over the time, and that's about the only time where you technically can fly drones in national parks is through filming permits. Um, with park, I've been involved in a couple with Parks Victoria. Uh, you know, and that's that's the thing. Uh, as long as you get permission, um, and really, even license, even if you're a licensed operator, it still does not necessarily say that you can just now go and fly a drone national park. This is a very very touchy subject you know it's a very very um controversial subject about flying drones in national parks but in short in a nutshell no you're not meant to fly a drone in a national park end of story whether you're licensed or unlicensed but you know i, I know a lot of licensed ca um, camera guys and those sort of things and they're all everyone's got a different opinion on it but in the day is well, you're not meant to full stop licensed or not um but that's, that's, you know, I'm only pretty much speaking the high country because that's what I know what's going on down here. So we'll see what happens with, with all that going forward. Have you ever um, had to fall in your in your, in your in your tea swinger? No, I haven't. I've never had a drama with um, swinging the old billy around. No worries at all. Pinnacles of Dargo this time of year. Um, depend on, uh, again, your experience, your vehicle, that sort of stuff. But, you know, Pinnacles um, driving down, down um, billy goats to the Dargo depends on how you are with um, driving steep country, and particularly if it's wet, mostly this time of year. So that's uh, something you might have to ask a few questions for yourself, eh, mate, your off-road driving experience and what your vehicle setup is like because, yeah, Billy Goats is uh, is certainly steep, steep country, and if you're going down to Dargo, where well, you're going to be going downhill all the way down. And where Billy Goats really gets really challenging, particularly if it's wet, is after the, is after the helipad because from the helipad to the bottom, is where it really gets that hard pack clay base sort of a track, and and if it's going to be wet, there's some fair and there's some steep pinches in that would could be um, quite interesting if it's wet and raining at the time. So just be careful about that one, that's for sure. Uh, Ross, I'll let you let you into my ultra secret pie ingredients. There we go. Wish to see sauce, but please don't tell anyone, right, mate? We won't tell anyone about putting wish to sauce in uh, in Ross's pie ingredients. There we go. That's a, that's a hot one. Just keep that quiet there, Ross. No one will know about it, mate. Especially on here, they won't. But there's there's 106 people. I'm sorry, mate. That have um they're going to hear all about it, unfortunately. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, Eric trees over the roads. Um, chain chainsaw nerdy yeah, Absolutely, mate. Wouldn't go without one. Uh, re chainsaw rule. I never knew. Yeah. I, I've like I said, I've never ever been even second guessed about taking a chainsaw into any national parks down here. But um. Yeah, and like I said, I, I wouldn't go without one. There's no way no one would go into the high country any time of year without a bloody chainsaw for those reasons I mentioned before. Um, Dean, what are, you, what are your thoughts on having a computer on a full drive um, on a full drive chip to improve the towing performance? Yeah, oh, look, mine doesn't do a great deal of towing, but I've certainly filmed, um, there's a couple of videos on there that we've filmed um, some vehicles that have been tuned for towing. So maybe check those out. And, again, if you want to give those guys a call down there, DTA down there at Dandong, uh, have a chat with Matt. He's away at the moment. He'll be back next Monday, I'm pretty sure. Um, have a chat with those because, yeah, those guys will tell you all about towing and, and how they can advise on setting your vehicle up for those sort of reasons and what's best. But I love the tune. The tune's fantastic. And I should get that video made that I talked about before. Uh, I wouldn't go anywhere with that chainsaw. Yep, same thing, mate. Go, okay, Patrick, how are you going there, mate? Thanks so much there for coming in there tonight. Uh, Mike, uh, I'd be keen to go prospecting for, for gold if it's worth. I'd Probably a good time to go out now, mate, with all the big rains and stuff that we've had over the last few weeks. There could be a little bit more on gold, maybe a bit of gold that's been un unturned, you know, from some of these uh, some of these rivers. So it might be worth getting out there and um, and getting the old uh, pan going or a bit of a detector if you've got one going on. G'day, Della. How are you going there, Knackers? Thanks very much. Greatly appreciate you coming in there tonight. Uh, Ron, uh, always carry a chainsaw in the high country, and the only thing that Parks have said to me is have you got, got a ticket to use it mostly for safety? Well, I've never been questioned about that either, but I do. I have done a chainsaw course, so I do have a ticket, um, and I highly recommend people go and do a chainsaw course. 
Um, you know, one of those things with a chainsaw, don't ever think you know everything about them because the day you become complacent with chainsaw is feeding the day is going to bite you. But, yeah, chainsaw course is well worth doing and I do have a do have a, a ticket, um, certified ticket for that. So well worth checking those out as well. Go, Riga, thanks very much. Greatly great pretty coming in here tonight. Uh, ever had any weird, creepy stories from locals on any adventures? No, I haven't. Um, you know, I've been around a lot of the old cattle guys, you know, from that Mansfield side and not oh, apart from the Unapuna, which um, some of you guys might have heard about the Unapuna, that story that's in Lovick's hut that happened there quite some years ago. That's an interesting one. Um, I've told a few people around that that story around the campfire at Lovick's and gets a few people you know, hair up in the back of their neck. So we might have to maybe talk about that at some stage down the track, but not on here tonight, that's for sure, because it, it is a great story what happened in Lovick's um, many years ago with the Unapuna. Right, here we go. Um, what's your thoughts on the uh, iDrive throttle control? I've never had one. Um, I was asked to maybe try one in my in my patrol, um, but um, after having the tune, I spoke to the guys down there about it, and um, they said it could potentially go the other way with the work that that's been done on mine, and mine doesn't need it. Um, the responsiveness to mine and is absolutely amazing. There's no lag, no nothing goes on. With, with my patrol since having the tune and everything done on it. So, yeah, I um, wouldn't be looking at putting a throttle controller on any time soon at all because, yeah, it's just great. Love it. Ah, here we go. So we've got going there. What's your thoughts on uh, the controller? We've done that. Um, sorry for the late entry. My account was – that's all right, mate. Greatly appreciate you coming in here tonight. Um, right oh, we might uh, we might wrap this one up, change my batteries on, on the thing. Yep, we've all done that there. There's a video on Lovix. There is a video on Lovix. But we might wrap this one up. Been chatting to you guys there for an hour or two. And um, let's have another glass of my wheat water, not vodka. So check out tomorrow night's video about um, swags. And, and I'll go into a lot of detail there about why I put my swag firmly on the ground and the setups and pack ups and roll ups and all that sort of stuff tomorrow night. So five o'clock, it'll start rolling out. Hopefully, you guys will check it out then. Thanks very much for even coming in tonight. Peter, Huru, Eric, thanks very much for there, guys. Kevin, good on you guys. Thanks very much. Greatly appreciate all the feedback. I love these live streams. They're, they're good fun. So, yeah, thanks very much, guys, and we'll catch you later on. Have a good week. Huru.